So, Saw. Don't get me wrong, I understand it's not for everyone, but we also can't deny the death grip this gore fest had on the general public for a solid few years. Every year we got a new Saw movie, arguably the progenitors of the torture porn variety of movies to hit the mainstream, or at least one of the most prominent examples. The movies quickly became known for their use of over-the-top gore, torture scenes, crazy big death moments, so much so that before watching Watching the films myself, I didn't even know there was like actual plot. <laughs> A whole deep interconnected story about police and the vast chain of events that motivates John Kramer to become Jigsaw and puts on his Saw games. And on that note, I'm going to just say don't worry, I'm not gonna show any of the gore stuff in my review. One, I know there's a lot of people who are real squeamish with gore stuff and I don't want to bother them. I want this video to be fun without making anyone uncomfortable. And two, I would like it if if my channel stayed monetized, and I don't think that can happen if I show some of the gore things. <laughs> so with all that out of the way, let's rank these movies. You know, it's good when the movie is titled The Final Chapter and then it got two sequels afterwards. <laughs> After interest waned in the franchise, the seventh movie was intended to cap it all off, meaning we got the final pieces of information with Jigsaw, his wife, his followers, and the cops chasing them all down. The important long-running story beats is really all this movie cared about doing, and because of that, the Saw games, my favorite parts of these movies, really suffered. In case you didn't know, Jigsaw chooses the people to play his games for a reason. They've done something wrong, they're bad people, corrupt, greedy, etc. The main dude in Seven, Bobby, just wrote a book claiming he was in a saw trap once. Yeah, just getting famous pretending to be a survivor. While definitely a scummy thing to do, I'd hardly say it's worthy of being put in the saw trap. To make matters worse, the traps aren't even clever or anything. They're really boring and kind of basic, and the movie tries really hard to stretch them out and make it feel more tense, but it just makes them more boring. And if you know anything about this one, this is the movie where the blood was pink. Yeah, something happened with their color correction and post-production. It's definitely not an artistic choice. If it was, I would have forgave it. But no, they just goofed up and accidentally made their blood pink. <laughs> and what really kills me for this one is the fact that the Saw Trap plot and the police and John Kramer plotline barely are connected. I prefer it when these two halves of the plots feel woven together, like they're really two parts of a bigger story. And Final Chapter does not do that, making both halves of these plots feel like unnecessary interruptions for each other. The whole thing is really lame. You can tell they just rushed this out to get the franchise done with. Oh, also? It was in 3D. Yeah, one of those movies where random shit just flies at the camera for no reason to show off it's in 3D. Ooh, what a shame. Years after the final chapter, we got Jigsaw, an attempted resurgence of the franchise. Because Hollywood ran out of ideas years ago and just keeps bringing back dead franchises instead. Jigsaw's weird because it's technically a prequel, or at least half of it is, but you don't find that out until the very end of the movie. As far as twists go, it was kind of neat, but it just raises more questions than anything. The people in the Saw Trap are supposedly Jigsaw's first attempt at doing a Saw Trap game, which is weird because the traps we see here are nothing like the traps we see in the first early movies. Also, these traps are really lame. <laughs> Like, they're in a grain silo, and sharp shit is just falling down, and they all magically happen to land sharp side down. Ooh. <laughs> it's goofy. My favorite is the one where the girl needed to remember how much money she stole from someone, and even though it was really obvious, she couldn't decide, so someone else just injects her with all three of the needles for no reason. <laughs> the more important twist is learning that apparently this doctor dude, Logan, was one of John Kramer's followers this whole time, helping him build his traps, even though he was never talked about before or mentioned in any kind of capacity. <laughs> it was definitely a weird attempt to bring back the idea of Jigsaw without having to just 
bring John Kramer back from the dead for like the third time. <laughs> what makes this one better is that some of the traps are kind of fun. The one where his leg gets stuck is really tense, and I like the trick with the very last trap. Also, while the police half was definitely boring, at the very least the mystery was compelling. Not a great way to try to breathe new life into the franchise though. I'll be honest, I can barely remember this one. You'd think a movie with big torture scenes and an admittedly neat twist at the end of the movie would have more of an impact, but no. <laughs> this was the first time the Saw movies did this sort of formula for the Saw traps, where it's one person, Jeff in this case, going through a gauntlet to try to save other people, similar to Bobby from the seventh movie. Unfortunately, the other instances of this sort of formula are just more memorable, either for being better or worse. Saw 3 is just kind of there. The police stuff started to get more developed, but the real focus was on attempting to save John Kramer's life, and those scenes with him and Amanda are so slow and boring. It just wags poetics and they try to sound real profound, but ugh. The first couple of traps that they used to set up the film were kind of interesting, but everything Jeff goes through is really dull. It's not a bad film, but it's just a boring one. Saw six. Similar to the last one, this movie also follows our main character, William, going through a gauntlet to try to save people. This time around, all the saw traps were way more fun. This one has the infamous merry-go-round looking trap, ooh. <laughs> the traps were really big and elaborate, the team definitely went all out with the fantastical designs for these ones. Which was nice, because some of the traps had gotten to be pretty rinse and repeat by this point. Also, the twist at the end with William was really, really good, it blew me away. Unfortunately, all of the police stuff on the side was really really bad. <laughs> Hoffman is just terrible. He's a terrible character. I don't like him. It's like it's like he wants everyone to find out he was the apprentice to Jigsaw. He does a terrible job hiding it. They had convoluted the whole plot with the police so much by this point that it's hard to follow their leaps in logic at places. Also, the reasoning behind who Jigsaw was putting into the traps had really run its course by now. In this one, William runs a health insurance agency, and they had turned down John Kramer. Like, I don't know. I know health insurance in America especially is fucking scummy, but I feel like this was a bit of a stretch here. <laughs> the gory parts that made Saw famous are fun in this movie. The traps are smart, but the plot surrounding those traps became too big for itself by this point. Also, being the sixth movie in a row, a lot of the stuff had just lost its appeal. People getting chopped in half was feeling pretty formulaic by now. My work will... Continue. Any complaints I had about the police half of the plot not feeling connected to the saw trap half of the plot are completely solved here because our titular saw game player, Rig, is also a detective and he is also the most badass saw player in the entire franchise. Oh my god. <laughs> Similar to 7, 6, and 3, this movie sees our main character going through the gauntlet style trap trying to save as many people as he can. Except the people actually stuck in the saw traps are all really awful criminals, and Rig doesn't actually care about saving them. <laughs> Rig is just running around, punching baddies, kicking ass, saving the day, he's great. Compared to every other Saw Trap player who wanders around, tweedling and crying, boo hoo hoo. Rig is just diving through the whole thing like a superhero, it's so much fun. What's keeping this film at number five though, is this really is when this plot started to get overly complicated. We got flashbacks, two different timelines, we introduce a bunch of characters characters who become integral to the plot's twists and turns moving forward. It's all just a lot. Also, we see Matthews die in this one. He survived for two whole movies just to get unceremoniously offed at the very end of this one? Meh. If you're jonesing for a more action-packed bloodfest from Saw, this is your best bet. <laughs> Two is a classic. This was the film that really cemented what we know today as the formula for Saw. It's very different from the first movie, but in a good way. If it was too much like the first one, it would have felt repetitive, and this film seemingly goes all out doing everything completely different. The police chase is essentially non-existent here, more focused on interrogation rather than hunting down the criminal. This is also the introduction of Matthews, you know, that guy I just talked about in the last one. <laughs> 
<laughs> the twist at the end with Matthews' son is memorable and clever, but of course, it's really the saw traps that are the best part here. The large ensemble cast wandering around trying to solve the traps together, but also feeling pitted against each other. We don't do this kind of formula ever again with the franchise. This gets tense, and some of these traps are the most memorable, despite being rather simplistic. I won't show it to you, but just think of the words Pit of Needles. <laughs> Saw 2 is great and deserves all the praise it gets. Hello, Detective Banks. The most recent film for the franchise, at least at the time of this video, Spiral is completely different from all the rest. John Kramer isn't in it and they don't pretend he is, which is refreshing. <laughs> Starred by Chris Rock, which, like, what a great performance from him. The entire cast does a fantastic job. Spiral is really different. It focuses much more on the police force rather than the saw traps. An interesting change of pace, but it makes sense. The mystery of figuring out who the copycat killer is is fun, but it's the more important overall message being tackled. Everyone who gets put into the saw traps are corrupted cops, and the corruption and abuse seen from the police, especially towards minorities, is a big element with this film. It's smart in how it tackles these topics. Even though it doesn't feel much like a saw film, it's still really clever. The ending was a little predictable, and the twist at the end wasn't great, but I'm willing to forgive that based on how good the rest of it was. Now as far as the saw traps go, they're all rather simplistic. No big, gigantic death ferris wheels or whatever. <laughs> the traps are much smaller and theoretically wouldn't kill you except for blood loss, but I appreciate it for being different, more subtle. This movie came out to only middling reviews, but I think it was pretty good. A nice change of pace to offer some more depth to the world and the characters. Live or die. The OG. The first one. The one that started it all. The one that is nothing like all the others. Seriously, watching all the films in a row, you realize just how completely different this movie is. There's only one trap. That's it. Sure, we see some other traps from other characters and like flashbacks, but they also only had to survive the one trap too. Like the reverse bear trap, for example. There was no blood fest, no gauntlet, no running around watching 17 people die. Just two dudes with their ankles chained up in a bathroom and a saw blade. This film is much more of a typical mystery. Watching our police force trying to piece together the clues and evidence to figure out not only where our two dudes are being held, but the most much larger story of the dark aspects of their pasts that had John Kramer put them in the trap in the first place. We dive into these characters a lot. Their lives, their secrets, there's a lot of flashbacks and a lot of problem solving. It's so different and smart. Wanton violence isn't the answer, it's all of the twists and there are a lot of twists and they're all so good. It's a smart one, it makes you think about it. It's crazy. Clearly the real draw of the film is how clever it is. The twists and turns, the little intricate details. It begs to be watched multiple times to go back and catch everything. But the thing everyone got hung up on was the gore and violence, and that's how the follow-up films made their fame. If you watch any Saw film, make it this one. It's smart, it's fun. Even if the blood and gore stuff makes you squeamish, there's not too much of that in this one, compared to the sequels at least. <laughs> we can't deny the massive impact the franchise had on media, and this is what started it all. And while I think this is the best film from an objective standpoint, it's not my favorite film. Get ready, because none of you are gonna agree with me on this one. Five! Yeah! The fifth one! Randomly in the middle, Saw 5. Here we go, let me explain myself. First of all, all the traps are so memorable. The giant pendulum blade, the water tank thing, which, fun fact, apparently the actor actually almost drowned filming this one. So, you know, hooray for safety protocols. <laughs> the way the character gets out of the trap is also really smart. All of the traps are really smart. But before we get to that part, let's talk about the police stuff. I mentioned how 4 was the beginning of the overly complicated web of police plot lines. Well, this film streamlines it a bit. We know Hoffman's the bad guy. He does honestly a very poor job at hiding it, and you fully expect Strom to catch him by the end. 
but he doesn't. And the way Strom fails is very memorable and iconic, but it just, it sticks with you after you see it. And that's the biggest thing with this one, it lingers. Everything that happens is memorable, and often is the one I think back to the most when I reflect on the film's creativity. But what really makes me love this one is the saw traps. It should be obvious by now that the saw traps are my favorite part. Always has been. I find them fascinating. And in all of the other films, the players of the games are really hard to get invested in. The most prominent aspect of most of these characters is just how they die. Nothing much about their real personalities or even their thoughts during the games. In this one, the players of the games are actively trying to solve it. In universe, they've learned by now that you can survive Saw games. Several people have by this point. They also know that the Jigsaw Killer doesn't pick people for no reason. It's all been about atoning for your actions. The players themselves are trying to figure it all out while also trying to solve their games at the same time. And you get to know these people because of that. But the part I love is the twist at the end, and I have to explain it to you for you to understand why I like it so much, so sorry if spoilers. <laughs> they find out at the end that if they had all worked together, they all could have made it out alive. The intention was that they should all theoretically live, but in their panic and frustrations they played the games wrong. The final puzzle requires blood to power up a thing to open a door, whatever, it's it's the Saw universe, you understand there's crazy contraptions like this all the time. <laughs> if all of the characters had lived, they would have only needed to lose a little bit of blood each, but since it's only down to two of them at the end, they need to lose way more, a dangerous amount more. And it's smart, it really makes you think back on the puzzles of the games, thinking about how else they could have solved them in order to help make everyone get out alive. And then it made me reflect on all of the Saw game puzzles, from all of the movies. What other resolutions could there have been? Was there other ways around any of them? That's why I like the Saw games so much. That's why that's my favorite part of these movies, and this is the film that made me think about that. And at the end of the day, the secret is, I just, I really like puzzles. <laughs> So while I understand Saw 5 is probably rather forgettable for most people, I really enjoyed it. And I had the most fun watching this one out of the whole series. But I'm sure all of you have your own thoughts and opinions on the franchise, so go ahead and leave your own rankings in the comments below. Shout out to my $10 patrons, you're all amazing. Nako, James Dodds, Cool Duck, Andrew, Ramiel, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, Classy Critic, Sunny Shy, Azoth, Great Bar, Pentamenta, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Keithin, Isaiah, Joseph, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Verus, and Zack. So yeah, I know I know the Saw franchise is divisive among a lot of people. Uh, but if you watched it, what's your favorite? I imagine a lot of people like one, a lot of people like two. What's your least favorite? That's another one that I find fascinating, because I don't know. Why didn't you like it? <laughs> any and all thoughts and opinions about the franchise and about any of my rankings or your own rankings, leave them in the comments below. I really would love to see them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.